G'day, I'm David Williams from CFA. Today I'm going to speak to two authors, Neil Grant and Adrian Highland. Neil Grant is a local author who spent time with the students at a local high school after Black Saturday. His book, From King Lake to Kabul, contains a number of harrowing accounts of survival. Me and Thway Nguyen's story, The Black Saturday, in the book From King Lake to Kabul, is a dramatic story of survival. Me's family only moved to King Lake less than 12 months before Black Saturday. The story shows the power of community and how those in the community rallied around to save them from the fires and also assist in their recovery. I was right in residence at a, a local high school in the, in the sort of King Lake area and uh, we, were, we were going to do a project that was unrelated to the fires and then of course on 7th of February uh, the fires hit King Lake and the surrounding areas and a lot of, a lot of students were fire affected. So uh, we had to reframe the project a little bit, um, which we did and a lot of students came to us and, and were, were keen to, to relate their fire stories and their experiences and share them. And one of those students was uh, a young Vietnamese girl called Mi Nguyen. And I'd actually met her father uh, the previous year when he'd been enrolling uh, his kids into my daughter's school. I was doing the same sort of thing. And it was, it was amazing to me that a, a, a guy had come out from Vietnam to, to be a baker in King Lake. It was, it was a revelation. And I'd see him sometimes riding his bike around the streets and it was just there. Yeah, it, was, it was quite surreal almost. And anyway, so me, me, um, I, I knew me had the story, and I, I'd, I'd asked her if she would if she would write it. And she's a very shy sort of girl, but she she actually said yeah, she could try and do something. And I and I, I said to her, please don't feel that you have to write it. Um, I didn't want her to feel compelled to write it. But she actually brought up a story that her mother had, her mother had written, I think initially as part of an English project. She was learning to to speak and write English. And me had uh, had taken that story and and crafted it a little bit, and brought this story to me. And it was it was a pretty um, a pretty heart rending account of a of a family who had no experience of fire whatsoever, and suddenly thrust into this this small semi rural community, and basically having to to cope with this fire situation. And the interesting thing about it was was the way in which they did that, and the way that they um, the people around them took care of them and it was a very important part of that sort of process. So me was home with her brother and her sister and her mum and they were very hot, they went outside and saw this big cloud and they didn't really know what was going on and then very quickly the fire sort of bore down on them and they, their um, uh, van's boss, Carol, who ran the baker up there, quickly came and said to them, what are you going to do, you need to prepare for the fire coming and they managed, they got inside and got all everything, you know, all the doors shut and basically sheltered in their house. The Black Saturday, me and Thuy Nguyen. My family came to Australia with a skilled migrant work visa. My dad came on 8 January 2008. Then my mum, brother, sister and I came on 27 February. We entered into a strange new land with a different language. We did not know English and it was hard. That was what was worse was that we did not know any other families, neighbours, relatives or friends, except my dad's teacher and his family, whom we met in Vietnam. Jenny, Lindsay and their family supported us, for our spirit as well as other matters. But there were still a lot of difficult things for our family. The reason we left our country to come to Australia was because we wanted a better life, and especially a good future for us three kids. A few days before the firestorm, the sun was shining brightly and it was very hot. Everyone just felt exhausted and frustrated. In the morning on Saturday 7 February, my mum went to the cafe to prepare the first Vietnamese dish there. There were very few customers at the cafe today, mum said after she got home from work in the afternoon. It was unusual because on Saturday and Sunday, the cafe was usually packed. I was about to turn on the TV, but mum said, it's hot, so you shouldn't turn the TV on. You should go outside and play. I went out and saw a big smoke, but I thought it was dark clouds. About one o'clock, Wayne, Carol's husband, came. He usually takes my dad for a drive because dad only has an L-plate. But this time he said he and my dad couldn't go because there were bushfires in Kilmore and St Andrews. We were not very surprised when we heard that news because we'd been told there were bushfires every year in Australia, so we thought not to worry at all. 
A few moments later I could see the sun bright red like a ball of flame. The air was extremely hot. Then Dean, our next door neighbour, asked, Are you all staying here or are you going to leave? My dad wasn't sure, so he said, We're staying here. At that time Carol came, came and said, Everyone should pack up their necessary belongings and be ready to leave quickly when it's dangerous. I will let you know. I started to feel scared, but I still didn't know what was going to happen. I went to the bathroom to have a quick shower. I could hear Mum telling Dad and the kids that they should come and get every necessary personal document ready and have something to eat just in case we had to leave. My family hurried inside and grabbed all the necessary papers that we brought from Vietnam. My brother gave my mum his school bag and asked her whether he needed to get his clothes and his toys. Before mum could answer him, we heard our dad shout, Hurry, get out of the house. I looked through the window and everything was black. Our house filled with smoke and became pitch black. My mum just grabbed whatever papers she could get her hands on in my brother's school bag. She had no time to put the papers in. Then they ran to the back door. Mum, wait for me, I screamed. Hurry, she shouted back. I quickly got my clothes on and ran out. Luckily I could see my shoes and grab them. My sister hadn't had time to put on her shoes. She just quickly slipped her feet into the pair of slippers that mum had placed at the doorstep for gardening. It was still daylight and there was no sign of a fire when we were standing in the backyard. However, in less than 10 minutes since Carol had given us the warning, the fire quickly rushed in. Our family left the house and went onto the street, but we did not know where to run to. On the right of our house were bushes that had not seen any fire yet. On the left hand side was the shopping area with flames everywhere. At that time we could only see cars speeding away from the flames. My family had to run on foot because although we had a car, my dad just had a learner's permit and he dared not drive. In regards to the Nguyen's sort of lack of knowledge within the fire sort of situation was um, Van uh, at the time was on his, his learners and he was he was scared to drive because, uh, and to us that just seems um, incredible that you wouldn't just take the car and get out sort of thing. Probably wouldn't have been a good idea under those circumstances anyway. But it was, it was um, yeah, that they were, they were so respected those road rules that they wouldn't, wouldn't carry that plan out was quite, well, reading that story was quite, quite incredible. But the way that their, their friends and um, I guess their surrogate family in a lot of ways uh, their employers uh, certainly were sort of viewed in those terms. They took care of them, they, they ferried them around places so they didn't have a car, and they looked after them. And when they, they actually managed to get out of their house and escape to a neighbour's house, and the, the neighbours shielded them in there, and then I think they escaped from there to a shed, and eventually the fire passed through. Um, but it was it was it was it was due to their friends and their yeah, their neighbours and and people they knew taking care of them. So I think that's an important important thing that sense of community. I think the lesson we can learn as a as a broader community from the Nguyen's situation is that we do need to connect with people. I think it's important um, as individuals to to know our neighbours quite well, especially when we move into an area. Um, it could also We'd also, we also need to make ourselves aware of, of what our surroundings are like and what the dangers and, and, and things are surrounding that. But I think definitely getting to know your community is, is a pretty essential one because basically as human beings we, we do tend to look after one another.